love triangles, bad hair, and getting laid. Teenagers have a lot on their minds. F you. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 greatest teen movies. It's, it's amazing that there's actually saps that cry at this. <sighs> for this list, we're focusing on movies that are for teens and about teens. It all boiled down to one inevitable conclusion. I was just totally clueless. With all the angst and acne that brings with it. It's good knowing this. <sighs> Number 10, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. It comes down to making out. Whenever possible, put on side one of Led Zeppelin IV. It's no surprise that this film appeals to the teenage demographic. Look, I understand. You can't help it. You're just lewd, crude, and obnoxious. Cameron Crowe wrote the book on which the screenplay was based after spending a year in high school at the age of 22, pretending to be a teenager. <laughs> He took notes on his classmates' experiences in love and life, and turned that insight into this enduring and detailed teen classic. I want a relationship. I want romance. You want romance in Ridgemont? We can't even get cable TV here, Stacy. You want romance. But that kind of makes you wonder who could have possibly inspired Sean Penn's character. Hey, bud, what's your problem? And how did he feel when he saw the film? I can fix it. Number nine, Juno. I've wanted this for a really long time. With its adorably awkward characters and witty and almost too smart dialogue. That ain't no etch sketch This is one doodle that can't be undid, Holmes Gillett. Juno is full of laughs. Yeah. That's why it's sometimes difficult to believe it's actually dealing with a topic as serious as teenage pregnancy. Exactly, right? Do you know what I mean? Like in the good old days, when it was quick and dirty. But the allure of this Diablo Cody penned film for teen audiences is that it doesn't talk down to them. I mean, I'm already pregnant, so what other kind of shenanigans can I get into? <laughs> that I should, I should probably bounce. But instead, navigates the issues of growing up, dealing with parents, and making life-changing decisions. Oh, I want things to be perfect. I don't want them to be shitty and broken like everyone else's family. Placing them alongside offbeat and unexpected moments like Juno on her hamburger phone. Can you just hold on for a second? I'm, I'm on my hamburger phone. Number eight, Greece. Hey, so uh, what'd you do all summer, Danny, huh? I was hanging around down the beach, you know. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. It's tough with all those chicks hanging around here. Who would have thought that over 30 years after its release, this film from the 1970s, but about the 1950s, would keep making audiences nostalgic enough to get up and sing. Tell me more, tell me more. Although none of the actors in the film were actually teenagers at the time, Grease isn't all that concerned with being realistic. Tell me about it, Step. Remember when the car flies at the end? Yeah, that was super lifelike. But even so, it's a picture of what teen life in the era of greasers and poodle skirts could have looked like. Why well, couldn't be Grease Lightning? Grease Lightning! We'll get some overhead lifters and four bell and for that, we'll always love it. Oh, sure, sure fine. Oh, okay, Eureka, how about I finish with you, huh? Finish this! Number seven, 16 Candles. Nope, I look exactly the same as I have since summer. Utterly forgettable. What's it like to turn 16 and have everyone forget because they're preoccupied with more important events? What do you expect, a breakfast birthday party? That's probably a story some teens have experienced, and this is where John Hughes shines. He deals with everyday experiences of being a teenager in, at times, extraordinary and ridiculous situations. This is everybody. <laughs> All right, who is this? And his teen dialogue is always spot on. Everything's fine, don't have a cow. This film was followed by Pretty in Pink, again starring Hughes Muse and 1980s every girl, Molly Ringwald, as an unpopular girl who falls for the popular rich guy. Another familiar story. Holy shit. Number six. Super bad. So by the time college rolls around, I'll be like the Iron Chef of Pounding Vaj. In Roger Ebert's review of this film, he called it a four letter rancherama with a heart and an inordinate interest in other key organs. I got a boner. <laughs> that pretty much says it all. 
in or around her mouth. The script speaks so well to its audience because it was written by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg when they were teenagers. Yeah, uh. seriously. But there are also many improvised moments as well. You're buying some beer, some guys getting punched. You don't worry about it. We're not going to find him. He's closed. Which gives Superbad a level of authenticity with the demanding teen demo. These eyes are crying. These eyes have seen a lot of love, but they're never gonna see another one like I have with you. It also doesn't hurt that the plot revolves around teenage horniness, getting drunk, and partying like there's no tomorrow. All right, getting crazy. Let's do it. Number five, dazed and confused. Vicky, come on, skip out, go get naked right now. Come on, stop. Featuring a slew of future stars like Ben Affleck and Matthew McConaughey in early roles. That's what I love about these high school girls, man. I get older, they stay the same age. <laughs> this one follows the varied groups of students as they converge on the last day of school. This Richard Linklater movie captures the teenage spirit in its loose structure, which basically means Dazed doesn't seem to have a strong plot. The party tonight, I heard there's gonna be a girl with knockers this big. Bullshit. <laughs> Promise, two oh, handfuls. No way. Yes. But that gives the film a sense of genuineness that isn't usually captured in more glamorized portrayals of teenage life. Plus, it's also quotable as hell. You just gotta keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. Number four, Mean Girls. Make love to your woman on the bathroom floor. I don't play like Shaggy. You'll know it was me. Because the next time you see her, she'll be like, oh, Kevin G. Thank you, Kevin. That's enough. Written by Saturday Night Live alum Tina Fey and based on the nonfiction book Queen Bees and Wannabes. If you need anything, don't be shy, okay? There are no rules in this house. I'm not like a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. Mean Girls is a more critical and satirical look at the high school experience. Well, there must be something you're good at. I can put my whole fist in my mouth. It follows a girl who goes to high school after years of being homeschooled by her parents and traces her rise and fall on the social ladder. Hey, buddy, you're not pretending anymore. You're plastic. Cold, shiny, hard plastic. While the film is hilarious, it gives its audience a lot to think about. But if you do touch each other, you will get chlamydia. And maybe it will help teenagers see their own world for what it is, a ridiculous social minefield. Did you write this? No, I swear. Then you told somebody. She told. You little bitch. You're a bitch. Number three, American Pie. Just uh, give me this, please. Oh, oh my and let's God. get this. Yeah. Oh. Oh. This is the film that made Superbad possible. We were doing the wild thing all night. I'm exhausted. Maybe not the first, but certainly the first super successful film of its genre in a long while. American Pie was made with a first-time director, producer, and screenwriter at the helm. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. While the humor is certainly unrefined, to say the least. Again? Not again. The characters are still compelling enough that the audience cheers them on as they try to get laid on prom night. Would you object if I said that you were quite striking? Mr. Finch, are you trying to seduce me? The film's success spawned several sequels, and it remains a landmark of the genre. What happened? What did he do? He blew it. Number two, The Breakfast Club. The next screw that falls out is going to be you. The initial plot to this movie sounds pretty boring. Being bad feels pretty good. Five different students from different high school cliques serve detention together on a Saturday. Get back to the library. Keep doing it on. Right. Another John Hughes coming of age classic, along the lines of his later effort, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's a story about teenage angst that continues to be relevant decades later. Andrew? You've got to be number one! I won't tolerate any losers in this family. Your intensity is for shit! Win! 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 The Breakfast Club doesn't have any particularly shocking or exciting moments. What do you drink? Okay, forget I asked. 
but the honesty of the students' dialogue is what makes it a quintessential teen film. Have you ever done it with a normal person? Oh, didn't we already cover this? You never answered the question. And an unmissable 80s benchmark. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You and Lori engaged yet? No, we got it all worked out. We're still gonna be going together so we can date other people. And screw around. I know. Hey, I hear college girls really put out. That's a touching story. It really is. Not my problem. Would you be willing to make it your problem if I provide generous compensation? the government could just get to the kitchen, rearrange some things, we could certainly party with the Hadians. And in conclusion, may I please remind you that it does not say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. Number one, Rebel Without a Cause. James Dean will forever be considered the quintessential symbol of teenaged angst. I don't want any trouble. And it's largely due to this film. Dean is often remembered for being cool and romantic. You can trust me, Judy. And Rebel Without a Cause is known for also looking at the chaos, confusion, and loneliness that comes with being a teenager. You're tearing me apart! What? You, you say one thing, he says another, and everybody changes back again! While people are still trying to emulate Dean's cool persona. Yeah. Certainly is. It's the theme of teenagers wanting to bond and find their place in a society that shuns them that makes this our number one teen film. Are you satisfied? Do you want some more? Do you agree with our list? You wouldn't know anything about that. What's your favorite teen movie and why? Ready for the prom? Yes, ma'am. For more angst-filled top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Well, you're going to be a little wimp, huh?